everyone, Aisha here. And so today I want to talk about the topic hypocrisy in the church. So this topic was actually inspired by a status that I posted on Facebook. And looking at one of the comments, you know, I really started to think, right? Because the status was about the one of the biggest problems that we have in Christian community. And what I was saying is that there's not a real distinction between Christians and the world. And so it's hard to tell who is who. And so someone actually posted a comment saying, no, the biggest problem with Christianity is hypocrisy. And so initially I wanted to get defensive. I'm like, wait a second, I'm talking about my Jesus, right? <laughs> you know, really wanted to get defensive and really stand for the Lord and stand up for the Lord. And then, uh, you know, I felt the Holy Spirit just saying, slow down, right? Slow down. And when I did, I had a chance to really think about what it is that we, she was saying. And I uh, realized that we weren't saying very, what we were saying wasn't actually very different. It's almost like two sides of the same coin, right? And so it was just weighing on me. And then all of a sudden, I just started to understand that this topic is something that really needed to be addressed because it is something that prevents people from coming to church and it also causes people to leave the church as well if they aren't rooted in faith and so please stick with me today and let them who have ears hear right and so i want you to stick with me as we discuss this topic and so i wanted to discuss this twofold because one of the things that i want to say first of all is that god uses imperfect people and so sometimes what appears to be hypocrisy actually isn't i think that you see it's about two things going on one genuine hypocrisy right and so let me give you an example of that um, I remember seeing something, um, I don't know how long ago it was, but whatever it was, it was some time ago where there was a politician who was, who is pro-life, like in politics, right? But it turned out he was cheating on his wife and he got his mistress pregnant. And so in that, what he was trying to do, text messages came forth. Apparently he urged her to have an abortion and I think he even paid for it. And so when it came out, like his public stance on no abortion, but then privately he was paying for his mistress to get an abortion, people were like, yo, like this doesn't make any sense. And it looks bad because, you know, he's do he's saying one thing and doing another. That is what hypocrisy is. You're saying one thing, but you're actually are doing something else and there's a lot of Christians who are guilty of that in fact there are a lot of people even non-Christians are so doing that but the thing is we as believers really need to get to the point where our actions meet what we say right because what we don't want to happen is the enemy to get a foothold and be able to start whispering things in people's ears like oh that's why you don't go to church you're a bunch of hypocrites because that can end up Affecting somebody's salvation, right? And I say this as somebody who left the church for seven years. It took me about seven years before I came back. And the biggest reason why I left the church is because I got tired of seeing Christians saying one thing and doing another, talking about how great the sermon was. But then you leave when these people left out the building, they were talking about each other behind their back. They were gossiping. They were cursing. And it, it just didn't match. And then I just just could not understand why here I'm a child at this point I'm a I was yeah, actually a child young adult right and I could not understand why the people I respected and looked up to were behaving in such a way and not only behaving in a such a way but also behaving in a way that was contrary to the word of God that I had been taught and as a um, has probably started having those questions when I was in my early 20s, seconds I wasn't a kid. And then eventually, um, sometime in grad school or so, I ended up walking out, walking away from the faith completely. Got to the point where I was actually outwardly denying God and in open rebellion against him. And God used imperfect people. And so this is why this topic is so important to me. Because number one, if I walked out the church for seven years because of hypocrisy, just imagine how many people are fleeing. 
They're leaving Jesus because they don't understand the distinction between Jesus and people. And I'm grateful for that seven years away because when I ended up encountering situations that caused real church hurt and real trauma, I was able to separate people from Jesus, people from God. And in that, I did not lose my faith when I encountered situations. And I talk about this in the book, Navigating the Impossible, where I encountered a situation where the church that I was attending at the time told me that they were not going to uh, dedicate my children because I'm a single mom. I knew as a person of faith at that point, who was very strong in my faith, that that was not of God. That was them. Right. And so I, because of that experience when I was younger, was able to maintain faith. When I encounter teaching and actions that were against God, because God talks about in the Bible to not hinder children from coming to him. And so refusing to uh, refusing to dedicate children of a single mom is actually preventing children from coming to God It is throwing up a barrier to, um, of children coming to God. And the other thing is, is had I been someone who was new to Christ, had I been someone who was weak in faith, I would have actually walked out to the church and then who would have been equipping me with what I needed to raise my kids in a way that glorifies God and that points into Christ. See, we have to begin to assess how we treat people. We have to begin to assess how our actions line up with what we say we believe. That is important because hypocrisy is a form of worldliness. It's a form of worldliness because we expect people in the world to not do what they say or to be who they claim to be. We don't expect that to happen in a church. Well, we shouldn't happen in a church, right? But at the same time, church is full of of humans church is full of people and we have to understand that god is not a man that he shall lie he's not a man that he shall lie and so god is different than people and i say this too for the people of god to have grace with imperfect people people and i'm not saying like people who are just we should have grace with everybody but grace with people who are really trying People who have a heart to love God, but they just might need to be pointed in the right direction and introduce the scripture for their lives to change. And I say that, as I was saying before, I started to, you know, get on my passion topic about church hurt. But what I was saying earlier, to take a step back, is I think that there is real hypocrisy and what people mistake as hypocrisy. That's number two, what people mistake as hypocrisy. And I think what people mistake as hypocrisy is people who are still growing. People who love the Lord, but maybe, maybe their hearts haven't been convicted in a certain manner. Or maybe they haven't been introduced to scripture yet. Um, regarding certain things that have that heart change, or maybe, you know, they're just, you know, they're just new and they just have opportunities for growth. And we all have opportunities for growth, right? And so I think that there's a big difference between a hypocritical person and a person whose actions don't match up to their words yet because they still have room to grow, but yet they have a heart to love Jesus and his people. And I say that because with God using imperfect people. Actually, God used people who were in the world to be able to reach uh, reach me. And so don't think that because you don't have it all together or whatnot, or don't think that because you don't have all the answers, or don't think that, you know, you don't, you still are sitting the same way that you did, that you can't be effective with bringing someone to Jesus. Because sometimes God uses that in-between time between when we get saved, when we give our life to Christ, and that time when we're, you know, still in the world, but beginning to pull away from the, the world. Sometimes that process can take longer than others, but God still uses that time period. And I say that as somebody who was a beneficiary of that, because when I became a born again believer, because like I said, I walked away for seven years, but the people who reintroduced me to Christ, they used to minister to me and tell me about Jesus while we were at the club, while we were partying together, while we were drinking together, while we were staying out to God knows what time. 
That is when the Lord was bringing me and shepherding my heart back to him. And so in order to reach me, he had to use people where I was at because at the time I was a party girl and the people who I was hanging out with, we were all in the club scene together. The difference between them and me was they had a heart to know the heart to love God. All of us, none of us, uh, right? None of us are in the club anymore. We have not been in a long time because God also convicted our hearts that that was not where we should be because he was sanctifying us, making us more like Christ Jesus and pulling us away from the things that used to give us excitement, used to give us pleasure and used to give us joy. And he changed our desires to match the desires of him. And so I share that with you to say is that if you are struggling and you still find yourself in your old situations, don't give up hope. Continue to talk about Jesus in those situations because you don't know who who's who you're planting seeds with or who you're watering with because the bible says that one man plants another man waters but it's god who gives the increase and so you don't know how god is using you during this time of struggle during this time of fighting those urges to go back and hang out with those old friends you don't know how god might be using you to witness to that group of people because that's what it was like in my life and I used to be really ashamed of it. I used to be ashamed to be like, yeah, no, I got reintroduced to the Lord in the club. But I realized that I need to share this with you because if you're looking at me right now, you might be thinking that, oh, you know what? She might have always had it together or, oh, I can't be, you know, who she is. And I don't want you to think that. Your journey is your journey. We might fall, but the thing is, the important thing is that we get back up again. That is what matters. And so the thing is, back during the time when I was in the club, so I remember my friends used to talk about, they used to literally, we would be in a club together, and they would invite me to church. <laughs> they would literally invite me to church. And so um, there was, uh, sometimes literally we would be out so late that they would leave the club and go straight to church. And, and I've heard so many stories about how people in the church would judge the people who show up to church with the club clothes on without thinking about the fact that they were convicted enough to show up to church. To praise God. It's God who is the one who changed the hearts. And see, we can be running people out of the church because of how we treat people. Because again, God uses imperfect people to reach his people. Look at Moses. Moses was a murderer. But yet he used Moses to to help the people, to free the people from Egyptian slavery. And to lead the exodus out of Egypt. God used... um. God used, um, oh, who else was I about to say? Paul. Paul was a persecutor of the church, but Paul became the great, arguably the greatest apostle and greatest evangelist outside of Jesus. God used Paul. God used so many different people who were not perfect. God used Peter. God said, Jesus said, Peter, you are the rock in which I'm going to build my church on. But yet, Peter had a temper problem. He had an anger problem. And he also denied Jesus three times. But yet Jesus still said, you're going to be like, I'm using you to build my church. Right? And so we have to remember that we don't know where people are on their, on their journey. Right? None of us is ever going to get it perfect, but we have to be able to discern between whether someone is just outright in rebellion through true hypocrisy or whether they're on a growth path, uh, a growth path, path. Because somebody could have looked at my friends and be like, uh, right? Those hypocrites, right? They're talking about Jesus. They're praising Jesus on social media. They're out here. Uh, singing it all out, clapping, dancing in church, but then they're at the club however many times per week we used to go. Their hearts had not been convicted yet that what they were doing needed to change. But during that in-between time, they were ministering to people, uh, evangelizing to people in their sin, right? Evangelizing to people and drawing people closer to God. 
And we can't negate that. And so I don't think that that makes people a, a person of hypocrite. Because for me, you know, when I, when I got, when I rededicated my life to Christ, it took a while for me to leave that old lifestyle behind and be convicted to be like, you know what? I am just done with this. I want no more parts of this. And I wouldn't have wanted anybody to judge me and look at me like I was a hypocrite because I was struggling with sin like everyone else. But it is God through prayer, through fasting, through reading the word of God, through engagement within Christian community, meaning the body of Christ needs to be involved with helping someone to be able to go from making that decision to discipling them into new life with Christ. So that way they feel convicted to leave their own leave their old life behind because when we get saved we have new life in christ but then there are things that need to happen for us to truly shed the old so we can walk new and then sometimes we might struggle with our old identity sometimes we might struggle with accepting that new identity in christ and in those moments we need the body of christ to be able to remind us that yes, we were dead in our trespasses, but in Christ, we have been made new. And so you don't have to go back to that old lifestyle. You don't have to feel shame that you might be struggling with certain things because it is a process. And that is okay. And the other thing too, is that I think sometimes that in our walk with Christ, we can forget who we used to be and what we were truly delivered from. I think sometimes we can begin to think that we're better than other people because we know Jesus, because we know the one true God. Sometimes we think that we can be, we're better than everybody else. But I think that also that sometimes it's the grace of God who reminds us of who we used to be, that life of sin that we left, when we came to Christ so that we can stay humble and know that it was only through his grace, the grace of God and through the power of Jesus that we were able to be saved. It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with our works, but it is only the free gift of the free gift of grace of God through Jesus's death, burial and resurrection and that our identity is anchored in him. And so we can't get to the point where we lose our humility and forget the gift that we were given. We can't get to the point where we forget that we were once dead in our trespasses, according to um, both Ephesians and Colossians speak to this. We were once dead in our trespasses, but we are made alive in Christ Jesus. Um, and so we have to, and in those times where God reminded us of who we used to be, it's not a point of shame. It's not a point of condemnation, but it is a thing to be able to remind us to be humble, but also to show grace to another believer who might be struggling, but to also show grace to people who are outside of the faith because it is our grace. It is our love. In truth, you cannot, you cannot neglect the truth, right? Because we are to be, to be set apart and we are to speak the truth in love. But it is those things. It is our empathy, right? So we don't have to compromise, but we can be loving and human at the same time too. And it is those things that will allow new believers to grow deeper roots in Christ and to have other believe, uh, non-believers to want to know the Jesus that we serve. But it starts also with us as the body because the, the church is not four walls. I truly believe God is doing something different in this season. Church is not just four walls because the body, the Bible says that we are the temple of the Lord. The Holy Spirit lives within us and we are the temple. So we are the church. And so when we go forth in our life, we are representing Jesus in all we do. And so we have to be careful to continue to grow deeper roots ourselves and allow God to change our hearts, change our minds, change our mouth and change our actions. So that way we represent him and all we do. And let me give you an example. So a friend of mine, she actually worked, uh, worked at a job. And so there was a person there who did not know Christ and she used to intentionally try and irritate her. Because she wanted to see if she was going to get a reaction from her. She was trying to see how far she could push her before my friend cussed her out, right? That, that's just what was happening. And so my friend never did it. 
she always showed grace. So, so no matter what was going on in the workplace, um, she always showed grace, never went off on her. During the time she wanted to, she just really asked the Lord to bridle her lips and not go off on this woman. And so she began, the woman began to come around because she could see that my friend was different from everybody else. Because everyone else, when they got upset, they start cussing people out, start to do crazy things. But my friend was always different. And the other thing was, is that when there were situations and stressful things that came up at work, um, my friend never participated in the gossip, never yelled, argued, cussed anybody out, ranted, rate, like none of that. None of, had not, did not have that water cooler type talk. None of it. She really operated in a way that was distinct and separate from everybody else. And it turned out she was the only believer at her job. And it turned out that whenever a situation arise, arose where people got stressed out and wanted to flip out, they would stop and turn to look at her. She was like, why is everybody staring at me all the time? Like that was how she felt. And they told her one day that they were always watching because they had not encountered a Christian who actually acted the way they said that they, according to the things that they said that they believed. So they were literally waiting to see when she would fail. Waiting. And, and, and she didn't. She didn't while she was there. By the grace of God, he kept her from falling. And so her actions were able to witness to a group of believers uh, and testify to who Jesus is in the saving power of Christ. And so you don't know who's watching you. You don't know um, if you are somebody who is the only person that one person is going to meet that is a Christian and it is your job to minister to that person to tell them about who Jesus is. And, you know, you might be even be in a situation where you don't even open your mouth to share the gospel, but it's your actions that will point people back to Jesus. And so you don't know. You don't know what type of evangelistic opportunities that you might have. And how your actions are going to lead people to Christ because our actions can lead people to Christ or our actions can repel people from Christ. And I think that sometimes people get it wrong because they think that, you know, if they if they're uncompromising about what the Bible says, then that means that they're going to lead people away from the Christ. And that's not true. It's not true. It's how you treat people that matters. It's whether or not you do what you say you're going to do. If you act out your beliefs. That is the thing that matters. If you give grace, if you show empathy, if you're loving, right? These are the things that matter. And so I say all of this to say is that if you're somebody who sees a Christian who might be struggling, give them grace because it might not be hypocrisy. You might just be witnessing the evolution of a person because transforming from a caterpillar to a butterfly isn't easy it didn't make the butterfly as the caterpillar in the state of a butterfly didn't mean that the caterpillar was fake it didn't mean that it was a, hypo, a, a hypocrite it just didn't know how to fly yet and there are a number of people because of lack of discipleship opportunities and a whole host of other things failure to equip new believers or grow believers in christ uh, which is an opportunity for the church. So sometimes we have an anemic body who doesn't know how to operate in, in Christ. And so sometimes people struggle, not because they want to, but just because they haven't learned yet or because they haven't been grown enough yet. And I don't think that those people are hypocrites, but the people who I do think are hypocrites are those who are unapologetic about doing the opposite of what they say that they believe. And so those are two very different things. And I think that you deal with those two very different ways, right? One, loving rebuke to help bring that person back into the fold. And the other, opportunities for growth and for discipleship. But in all things, love, 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 love all people. Jesus loved all people, regardless of whether they were a sinner or not. And so that is something that we need to do as well. And so I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that this has helped you to get more insight. Uh, if you were convicted yourself, just ask the Lord for forgiveness 
and for him to continue to do that work in you. Because the Bible says is that he who has begun a good work is faithful to complete it. So he will complete that work in you. Just open up your heart, your mind to be changed. Sometimes and your actions to be transformed. Because sometimes it can be hard to put off the old and put on the new. But in Christ, you can absolutely do it. And I also want to encourage you to check out my new book, Navigating the Impossible, a survival guide for single moms from pregnancy through their first year of motherhood. And in that book, I talk about, you know, my encounters with hypocrites in church and my encounters with, um, you know, with with church hurt and how I was able to overcome that and be able to grow from it and how it gave it really now that I'm thinking back on it, how this also how that also helped to shape my perspective of where I am now. So it's kind of like watching real time um, how I was dealing with the situation because I actually was writing it during parts of what I was dealing with. So, yeah, so I encourage you to head over to NavigatingTheImpossibleBook.com, NavigatingTheImpossibleBook.com to go check out your copy. And make sure you forward this video to a friend. Share, share, share away. Leave me some love. Leave me some uh, comments. And let me know how this has helped you. Talk to you soon. Bye.